Yep, going. All right, so this is the quick setup procedure for using the 3200 traffic lights on vehicle activated mode, which is the mode you must use. Um, it's the compliant mode. So these are the 3200s. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in the batteries. So if we come down here, hold on my hand, we've got the battery cable here. So we plug that in. When you plug it in, grab it by the grey plug, because you don't want to grab it there, you're going to pull the wires out and have damage over time. So always grab it nice and close. And then when we slide this in, just careful there's no snags. So you get that up there, slide it in, just make sure that's not snagging on anything. Shut the door. And then put our padlock on. People will steal the batteries. Lock it, it's still not locked because I can push that. So when I put it lock in, change the combo locks. The next thing we're going to do is put the aerial on the top. It screws into here. And we screw that on so it's nice and tight. Just pause the video. Yep. So now we've got traffic light number one and traffic light number two. Batteries are put in there, plugged in, locked up. Now we want to slide some extra ballast under here or into there all the time, windy or not windy. These are $20,000. If they blow over, you will have problems. So um, ensure to put extra ballast on top of them. Make sure both aerials are screwed on top, otherwise they will not work. And when you're traveling, take them off because when you come into a depot like this, they will break off. And when these break, the traffic lights will not work. Same thing when they fall over, these will break. That's why we ballast them. Pause. All right, so we'll come nice here, nice and close, so we're going to turn the light on. So it's just going to go through initiation here. And now we're going to turn the other light on. Turn that on. Come back over to here. You can see here it says 13 volts. And if we go over to here, this one will show, you can push this wee button here to get it to display the um, voltage. 12.7, so that's good. These, we'll come back over here. These are 12 volt units, so when they have less than 12, they cannot work because they require 12 volts. So when they're 11.9, even though they're working at any time, they could die. So around 12.1, 12.2 is when you should be changing the batteries because they drop about 0.1 to 0.2 of a volt a day. So anything 12.5 and above is good, but when it gets close to 12, think about a battery change and charging your batteries. Okay, so we've got both on. We've got both silver switches on radio mode. That means it's using the aerials to talk to each other and be smart. Do not have it on quartz. Quartz is for emergency mode only when something's broken. This mode here is not NZTA compliant, so we do not use it. Pause. So we always have it on radio. Cable means nothing, we're not connecting a cable between the two, so radio on, which is up. Okay, now the mode, the operating one we want to have it on, always have it on seven. Seven's a good go-to, that's where they work the best. Eight is vehicle um, green on demand, but the problem with green on demand is the lights will sit on red until it sees someone. So if somebody pulls up before the lights and the sensor doesn't pick them up, they will sit there forever. So seven safe because it will rotate from one end to the other end regardless if there's traffic or not traffic. The other problem with eight is it'll pick up pedestrians and you could get a green going green or when you've got trucks leaving site you never know when you can leave because it's not going through a natural cycle when there's no traffic. So seven, unless you want to get technical, is the safest thing. Seven, radio, up. Now we're going to look at the, um, we're going to have one on receiver and we're going to come over to the other light replicate the settings it's on it's on radio it's on seven this one's on transmitter one has to transmit come back over here one must receive receive if you have both transmitting or both on receiving how they're going to talk to each other you need a person talking and a person receiving so it doesn't matter what light you do it on as long as one's on transmitter and one's on receiver that's the only setting that is different Everything else is duplicated. So this one's on receiver, the other one's on transmitter. The frequency here, 
always leave it on one, forget it, it's always on one. The other light will be exactly the same. Okay, so now we're going to work out our clear times. Our clear time is when we've got a light here, for example, and a light here, travelling at 30 k's an hour. How long will it take to get through before this one goes green? And it knows that calculation, knowing that you have 30 k speed limit, and it knows by the length of the site how long it takes to get from point A to B. How do we work that out? We use this table. This table we've ta taped up all other speeds because you're always using a temporary speed limit of 30 kilometers an hour. So then we look, we're going to have the lights 200 meters apart, go along here, that's 28 seconds. Now, that's from light to light, not how long your road cones are around your work site, that's how long it takes to get from light to light. Because if you don't measure that correctly, and you'll get somebody going on a green when the other guy hasn't cleared through the site. So it's from where your stop go guys would stand is where your traffic lights are. That's very important. Don't guess it. Count the white lines on the road. They're 10 metres apart. Be accurate. Don't go too big to be safe because then you're going to have cars waiting to get a green because you said the site was really long and that's the clear time. So 28 seconds at 200 metres would be down to here. 20. And that's your second digit. 28. So now we go to the other light. Everything else is the same. 20. 28. Okay, now if the site was 100 metres long, it says 16. So 10, second digit to get your second decimal point is 16. Okay, that's great. So now we know how to get the clear times. If we come back to this chart, and it's in between the two, so you've got 34 and 40, and you'd say you're um, in between that distance, you could go to the next distance or work out the difference between 34 and 40 and go in between. The best way to test that is you drive through the site from one end and when you get a green and you get to the other end checking that light's not on green. But this is very accurate here. The only time it won't be accurate is if you're on a hill and you've got trucks and they're taking a very long time to take off. Then you might need to increase it. But generally this is very perfect. Okay, so now we've got these on the same. We're going to look at the green time. Now the green time is how long we're going to get the green. But because it's vehicle activated, it's smart. So generally on a really busy road, you could have this right up to, say, 100 seconds. It wouldn't matter because it's the green time here works off these sensors up the top. So these sensors detect traffic. See that flashing red? That's detecting traffic. So for example, if we had this here on... 70 seconds green time and it sees two cars go through the site and it doesn't detect any more up there it doesn't stay on green for 70 seconds it goes hey mate I should go back to the other end because I see no more cars so if you go and set this to 25 seconds green time and you have lots of cars and then you wonder why all the queue doesn't get through, it's because you just told the lights no matter what, I do not care, at 25 seconds you will end your green. So having this big is fine, because if you only have 10 seconds of cars going through, it won't censor them, point back at a sensor, and it will go back. So that is the smart way of using these lights. It's very different on quartz mode, because quartz mode, I'm not going to get into details here, will give you this every time, which is no good because if you've got no cars at one end it's going to give them 60 seconds of green for no reason, that's why these lights are smart, so go bigger here. 70 is pretty good for most busy state highways because it will auto adjust, but again there's nothing wrong with being too long. Now the key thing with the sensor is actually pointing it to the start of the threshold area so it can see cars approaching. Too high in the sky it isn't going to pick up cars pointed down too low it's not going to pick up the cars coming through so you just want on a general sort of a 45 degree angle pointing at sort of three cars back and you can turn it angle it too so it's pointing into the middle of that lane if that's not flashing when you wave your hands on it the sensor is broken which means it will always time out at 10 seconds green the reason being is if it's broken it's got a minimum of 10 seconds built into it the other way you'll know this is broken is come back to here, I've got this set to 70 seconds of green time, when this light goes to green and I wave in front of it for 70 seconds it should stay on green, if I'm waving my hand in front of it 
and I've got the green time set to 70 and it goes back to the other end and finishes its green at 10 seconds, you know that's not registering carts. So that's a good way to think about it. This is where it tricks people. The best way to test that the green phase is getting your maximum is waving down, waving on the sensor. So if there's no cars at one end and you go watch it and nothing's tripping it and you go, oh, it only gave me 10 seconds green. No kidding, because it didn't see any cars so it didn't give you your maximum green time. So if we come back down to here, this is the maximum it will go green when it sees cars, but it sees no cars, at 10 seconds it'll go back to the other end. So a good way to fault test the sensor up the top is wave your hand in front of it and ensure that it runs to the full green time. Alright, so now we've got these the same, we've set this to 70, we set that to 16, because we we're going to be 100 metres long, we come back over here, we make sure everything's exactly the same on this light, 10, 16, 70, the only thing different here is one's a transmitter, one's a receiver. Okay, now just because you've turned the dials you would think that this thing has made the changes, wrong. Any dial you change does nothing until you turn it off, turn it on, the lights will flash orange, turn it off, and turn it on. So if I do anything to the light and extend the maximum green, or change the clear time, the red time, or anything, I must turn it off, then on, otherwise it will do nothing. Pause. Right. Okay, so that's the end of the video for you to go and use the lights. So you can stop watching now if you've got that, but you can continue watching if you've got a fault with the light or you want to know some tricks for when you get faults out on the road. So continue watching now if you've got time, but if you know the lights, you can carry on. So here's the tips and tricks. Okay, generally when they say a light is missing and it goes, oh, light 2 missing or something's not working on this panel, it can only be a few things. The first thing is, the other light's battery is too low, so it's not working. So checking battery levels are above at least 12.1 volts is key. Now, the second thing most commonly happens is, these, these aerials are not screwed on the top, or you've broken one, so it can't talk to each other. It's like a radio where someone lost its antenna. So these aerials are very important. Okay, another reason why these traffic lights might not work on vehicle active motor motors, you've got a big, solid metal truck parked very, very close to them. So it's like a big microwave pinging things off the truck. They have to be very close for that to happen. So even if a big bus or a truck goes past them, they might flash orange for a little bit where they will find each other. That's just a short term thing. If you've got a big truck parked to them, they will crap out. So don't have any big plant parked to them. They will work a long way away from each other. Um, the only, and we talked about the sensor up the top here. If you think the sensor's not working, set the green time to a high green time. Wave your hand in front of it, and if it runs at two, that green time, it's working. But don't just watch it, because if it's not tripping anything, then it will go back after 10 seconds. Another common fault, the traffic lights aren't working, because you set both of them to a transmitter. One's transmitting, one's transmitting. How does it, how's the other one receive? Or you've got both set to a receiver. Another reason that something might not happen, because you've made a change and you forgot to turn on and off again. Pause. Another common question I get is somebody calls me up and goes, oh, there's a car gone through and the guys were still travelling through the other direction, so there was a car going this way and a car opposed them. And so you're going, oh, what, what's wrong? Well, the only thing that can be wrong is you've got the clear times wrong. So you have to check your sight distance from light to light. I do like to add 10 metres onto each end in case the car's parking up 10 metres before the gate. That's it, I wouldn't add any extra. So a total of 20 metres. Um, but yeah, and then the other thing is, have you actually driven through the site? Because in some areas, traffic will run a red light, he won't tell you, 
but the car that come up against them on the green will yell out his window, I was coming through the site on a green and there's a car coming the other way, your traffic lights are broken. How do you know they're broken? That car coming the other way most likely run a red. So give some faith first to the lights and check the public first. You can drive through the site to check that. So sit at your end on the green light, try to be the last car to pull out when it, when it goes to orange and drive to the other end at 30 k's an hour and if the other end's still on red, you're good. Pause. For any reason they have a wee spaz attack and this can happen when people are jumping between radio and courts. Again, radio is the go-to. The best way to eliminate that is turn the lights off, go into the carriage down here and unplug the battery. Leave the battery unplugged and this off for a while and it'll just clear both ends. Um, that's just if it's stuck on an old mode. Also, when we've got the batteries unplugged charging, always have this off. Leaving it on can cause it to go into a funny, funny situation, so always this off. If you're doing a battery change, you can just leave this on, unplug the battery, momentarily it will have enough power inside here to hold it, plug it in, it'll flash orange for a wee bit, and then they'll connect up. So battery change, you can just pull them in and out. But when you've got them off all night, have that off. Okay, to recap, we've got well ballasted, locked, secured, the lights facing the traffic, sensors facing the traffic, aerials on, um, and then that's all good. Now the last thing is, if you do have a transformer on a lamppost, those big power box things that you hear humming away on a lamppost, and it's near the site, and the, and the traffic light that, at that end is having problems talking, it's because that transformer is sending a lot of noise into the air. So the, air, the lights talking to each other can't talk through the air because that big transformer is affecting it. If that's the case and you've checked all the other things, you can go to quartz mode, watch the other video for that. You should tell your road controlling authority when you go to that because what's going to happen now is you're going to get absolutely set green times at each end. So it's not good because you have 100 cars at one end, one car at the other end and the car of one will still get a lot of green. So when you go to quartz, you've got to be more realistic to actually knowing what exact green time you want because then it can jump from one light back to the other light and it's not giving excessive amount of green. Pause. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this video useful.